Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. It's me, Hebot, your host of Toys in My Closet. As you guys know, I am your action figure enthusiast and video game aficionado. And before I go further, I do want to apologize because I had this video already uploaded on my channel. This is actually going to be the third time I tried to make the video, or that I am making the video, uh, and having issues when I upload it. So, uh, it's been exhausting, to say the least. It went from enthusiastic to kind of like a drag. But, all in all, I'm still going to try to do the best that I can with the best of my abilities so that you guys can enjoy it the best that you can when you come here and view it. And, Jesus Christ, oh my God, as you guys see in front of me, I have today for you none other than the brand new Streets of Rage 4 Axel Stone Collectible Action Figure by Storm Collect Collectibles and this is something that's kind of been uh, pretty much a dream of many 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 of my peers from my era growing up with Streets of Rage as uh, in the Genesis and Super NES era which it became uh, one of the best beat em ups of all times in home console and even arcades. Quite possibly, this could be the greatest beat em up series of all times. And as you guys know, for many, many years, you know, these figures never had their license given out uh, and properties to be created in collectible figure form. And this is a premium product. This is not a toy you can buy at Toys R Us or at a Walmart or at a Target. No, this is only strictly through online with StormCollectibles.com, which they believe they're based off the out of the UK. This is definitely a premium product. This is a $90 figure with the shipping and handling and tax of international shipping. Also, to here, it's about 120 bucks. So it's not for everyone. But one thing I can say for Storm Collectibles is that they always do all their IPs scattered out, little here, little there, throughout the course of the year. So you don't really feel the weight of having to buy a $120 figure every week, for example, like you would with a Marvel Legends or would even with a McFarlane Toys, where he has been on the hot seat and non-stop. Something like this you actually would get maybe once every five months by the time you receive it you, and you pre-order the next figure you know it could be up to even almost a year now I really hope Storm Collectible dives in and makes more characters from the Streets of Rage universe and lore all the way from the first game to the fourth because there are a lot of cool characters, designs costume mashups from them being younger to older like Skate and Max, and you know what I mean, and, and Adam Hunter, Blade, you know, there's so many characters, and with me, this kind of makes me feel like happy, and at the same side, time, it makes me feel sad, because this brings a lot of fun memories to me from when I was younger, and my mom was still alive, which she has passed on many years ago now, and I remember her very much when I look at something like this. You know, same way I felt when I reviewed Golden Axe, the bat Axe Battery figure. Uh, it just, it, you know, it brought me back to that time where things were a lot easier and a lot more simple, right? And not as uh, dreadful, right? As things are now, as you get older, you know, things can be pretty depressing sometimes. So, let's start off with the box. I'm super excited. This is funded by myself. This was not a sample that Storm Collectibles sent to me. Let's get that out of the way now. Had I been the first one to upload the video with the first video I created that got ruined and corrupted, I probably would have been the first guy on YouTube with this review. Uh, the Amazing, the great The Amazing, obviously, he got to do it first. And obviously he gets, you know, his uh, Storm Collectibles always first because I believe they send them to him. 
So that kind of sucks because it would have been nice for me to be one of the first to put it up to kind of bring traffic to my channel for the you know before anybody else. Not that it's a competition, obviously, because it really is. It doesn't really matter because his review will be very different than mine. But just to bring traffic first, I guess, because he, you know, he's way more popular, obviously, than I am. So, you know, it is what it is. Now, here we are with the packaging in front of us. And as you can see, um, it looks really nice with the colors, the street deco, the same, you know, uh, aesthetics of, of the Streets of Rage. Right here, you see, right in front, you see first and foremost the Streets of Rage logo from the game. The first um, promotional graphic art that they gave when they introduced the teaser trailer. The Axel Stone in writing is in the same font that they use in pixel style within the game when you're playing it, when you have, you know, right next to your life bar and things like that. Now down here it says Total Collectibles. Right there. On the corner it says Ages 17 and plus. So this is not for young kids. Then on the top it says Streets of Rage in the same aesthetic and font. On the side it says Streets of Rage with a beautiful uh, promotional shot of Axel in the figure form, obviously. Then we turn it around. Same thing. Wonderful pictures of Axel uh, in his different, you know, uh, how you call it, poses, weapons, face scopes that it brings, and things of that nature. And then on the other side, Streets of Rage, again, with the actual font. But this time, they switched it up. And as you can see, he's more in, he is in actually in the pixel form of the art in the game. And as you can see, he's a lot more chunkier, or girthier. So, that's really awesome. And I don't think there's something in the bottom. Oh, yeah, Streets of Rage 4. Age of 17 and all the legalese and writings, you know, in the Japanese or Chinese, right, uh, you know, lettering, uh, wherever it was distributed. <laughs> or manufactured, rather, sorry. <clears throat> so, without further ado, guys, I'm very excited to bring this to you. And this is very exciting for me. Um, I love this property, as you guys know. I'm a big beat -em up fan. Let's take him out the box. Let's take a closer look at him. And let's see what he has to offer. And one thing I will say beforehand, there is a quality control issue with this figure that I didn't expect and that is not the norm for Storm Collectibles. But I'll address it and point it out as we do the review. So sit back, relax, have a nice digital drink. And I hope you enjoy, you stop by and you continue to join me for the entire ride. See you soon and I'll be right back. And so here we go guys, we have Axel Stone out of the packaging. First thing I'm going to point out, if you notice, I have a backdrop. The actual insert of the actual packaging is a level within the game of Streets of Rage. This is actually the first level to be exact. And it looks really, really nice. Um, Storm Collectible usually has a tendency to do this type of stuff. I don't remember if they do it with all the video game figures, but I believe they've done it with a lot of them, or most of them. So, like they did with, you know, the Samurai Showdown one that I did. Uh, so this is the backdrop, and the nice thing is, on the other side, there's another different scene in a backdrop. So you have a nice selection to display them in, if you'd want to display them with this backdrop insert. now. I'll show you guys, you guys that later on as I do the review. Right now, let's take a look at Axel. And let's bring him up close. And as you can see right there, absolutely stunning. The artwork, the sculpting, the soft edges, the aesthetics, the square edges that you see there to match and make him look like it's part of the game look phenomenal. His Goldilocks looks his baby blue eyes, the soft texture, the details in the ears, the hair kind of billowing over, the bandana that is wrapped around his head, which is in blue, and this hair is sculpted really nice, soft, 
not really super detailed but detailed enough and that's why this is an extra piece because they wanted to give it that illusion of the bandana being tied around this you know around this head and the beautiful beautiful baby blue jacket the outlines in the actual sleeves of rolled up with white with the buttons all nicely painted in white to match his inner shirt that is in white which is a tank top and the nice skin tone matches very well with the face and the arms and as you can see as you're going down there is some uh, you know uh, wash on the shirt like in a light gray or black but you can't really see it in the camera but it's there and you have the wonderful open knuckled handed fingers red gloves his traditional gloves and then we have here the beautiful skirt piece which is a sweater tied around his his uh, waist which he looks makes him look badass and preppy at the same time and as you can see this is the quality control when I took it out and started messing with him the paint started to chip off on the figure all the way around you see all that all that is paint chip and I'll be honest with you I've never had that type of problem with any storm collectible figure they've, they've always been pretty unmatched and top quality at all times of course rightfully so because they're premium products then we'll take a look real quick here at his denim jeans in that nice navy blue going all the way down with a softer look but obviously it's because of the video game style but you know it's supposed to be jeans and then the tethering underneath in the in the actual ankle and these are his sneakers high tops or mid-range tops the tongue with the gold inside the red stripes on the side with the baby brown or like khaki brown uh, feet you know toe and soles on the sneakers now I don't know if that right there is supposed to be painted in the game like a symbol I don't remember or if that's just a paint blemish but all in all for the most part everything is painted and really nicely clean and done really well and he looks you know really great as a figure has a nice weight to him the plastic all feels nice and soft and some parts feel a little harder than others but not overly done so there is actual role so as far as his aesthetic goes and how his anatomy looks I think that Storm Collectibles actually knocked it out of the park. He is a very, very, almost 100% accurate representation of what you see inside the game when you're playing it. So, there's a lot to look forward and to actually talk about. Now, let's take a closer look at his accessories. And oh boy, are they a bunch. And here we go. These are all his accessories. I kid you not. And he has a plethora of accessories. Now, Storm Collectible has the habit of doing this a lot of times with a lot of figures when they first introduce a new line. In this case, obviously being Streets of Rage 4. Now, I don't know the reasoning behind it. Uh, I'm thinking maybe because they just want to give a really good impression to the licensee, the person that licensed them out, the IP and the property. Or maybe it's because they're not sure if they'll be able to make more characters. Because if it doesn't sell well or if it doesn't get approved for them to make other characters. So I figure, I'm figuring they said, well, let's go all out because Axel is the main character in Streets of Rage. Even though me personally, I've always felt Streets of Rage was the main character was the three characters in the game because they all played a role in the story and the game felt didn't feel complete even when you played single player because of the other characters not being there and being absent unless you use two player co-op in the original game or even three um, so 
you see the first thing we're going to take a look at is his hands and he comes literally with six pairs or five pairs of hands pairs meaning two of the same so we we'll start off first with the fist that he had on for his bare knuckles because aka that is the name of Streets of Rage in Japan the game is called bare knuckles and here is his second spade hands which is the open hands which is the hands that are like to get ready to either smack someone or to do a type of martial arts pose the second hand is another spade hand open with kind of like the knuckles in two of the hands farther up as you can see which is another pose posability hand that looks like uh, he's going to do either a grabbing or another martial arts, you know, pose. Then, of course, we have the hands with the open hands out as well. Also putting uh, the illusion of him doing different martial arts pose or like if he's going to throw in a... Uh, bow arrow or even a boomerang in this case so the options of playability and display are um, very high because you have a lot of options and the lastly the last hands that we have is the closed hands that are for the weapons for him to hold now I don't know why he doesn't bring trigger fingers I don't remember Street of Rage 4 having guns and I don't remember if any of the first three they had guns, but if they did, any of the enemy that you fight, I'm pretty sure you can pick up the guns, but I don't think it did. So, moving right along, we have the bat. Now, I don't know why they colored it orange, because I would have much rather it be like a wooden color, because it has all that detail, like actual wood. If you notice, but it looks orange. And not a wood color. Trust me, the camera is not being indicative of what it actually looks like in person with the wraparound, uh, you know, tape. But it looks really nice and it's really nice to execute it. It looks really good. Then we have obviously the red staff with the bottom of the tip in that nice metallic gold, very long, and that's to attach. This other, this other piece, which looks like a big bladed sword, almost like a scythe on a staff. I forgot the actual proper name of this, but there is a proper name for it. And here is what it looks like attached with the nice metallic gold over the gunmetal silver and even on the top ring area, the gunmetal silver and the gold. I have some plate metal issues there, I think. Uh, and it's very long. It's like at least 12 inches if I had to, you know, take a guess. Then we have, uh, seems to be uh, one of the Kutanas swords. And here is the sword, the gunmetal. And then on the end of the sheath or the handle, right, you have that nice teal with blacks. And the gold metallic on both ends. Really, really elegant looking. He comes with one scythe with the black handle, metallic gun metal on the silver. He comes with this beautiful looking boomerang, which this is the one he throws. They start throwing at you that you can actually catch and throw back at them if you time it correctly right before you go into the dojo stage with the nice good metal and the details right there. Then we're moving right along. The next one is the meat cleaver with the gunmetal silver, the weathering and aging on it from being used <clears throat> with the handle in a nice brown khaki uh wooden handle and this is where when you go into 
the kitchen stage that they throw it at you and you can use it yourself. Then he has this blade, terminal silver, handle also in brown, with the khaki brown. And this is with the guys with the bandanas. It kind of looked like uh, Machine Gun Kelly with a bandana with a do-rag. And they have their hands in their pockets. And he attacks you with a straight attack. And if you don't time it right with the counter attack, man, they are annoying and they always catch you all the time. And they're very difficult to deal with, especially in the harder difficulty levels <clears throat> or modes, rather. Next, we have the broken bottle with the corkscrew and all with the red top labeling and the labeling in the front. And it looks like a nice see through weathered stained glass broken up that you can use as a shave, right? And then, of course, we have another one of those bottles, but in full form without being broken, with the label, with the course screw, with the, 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 the wrapping around it, right? Uh, hold on. Try to find it. It went missing in action on it. It disappeared. There's a little detail that I want to point out. Here we go. Found it. If you notice, it's also in that stained uh, see-through translucent green, um, but it, it looks a little bit thicker and more, uh, you know, uh, kind of misty to give it the look that is full with, obviously, some wine inside of it. So it's a very nice detail or attention to detail. Then we'll move along, obviously, to his first <clears throat> portrait, fan portrait, which is the one he came with, as you guys saw. This is the serious grunt face. But he also has two more additional portraits, which is this one here with the grin and the grunting, looking like he's about to get really pissed. Really nice. For the most part, all the hairs and the details of the hairs look the same, just with the exception of the sculpting around the gestures and on the lips. But the pearly whites and the lips look at that pink color, really nicely detailed. Then this third portrait is him with this yelling scope. Looks fantastic. You see that? Pink tongue, pearly whites, mouth wide open. Looks very natural. And like I said, you can tell it's from a video game because it has a video game look. But it's also done in a way where it almost looks like it could come off as real life in our reality. And the baby blue eyes. Everything's painted really well. And the, all the heads match the same. Now, it also comes with this extra headdress, and I think it's because they pop off, they gave you an extra one in case you lose one of either of the heads. You have a way to replace it with a new set of hair. And for the most part, they all look sculpted the same, but, oh no, this one's different. This one has the hair going that way, as opposed to this one has the hair going that, that way to the left, and his to the right. But it's still a nice inclusion in case you do lose one of the headpieces. These two stands are from NECA. They didn't come with it. That was just to hold up the, the portraits. And then we have these three beautiful and really well executed pieces of translucent fiery red with orange fire. These are fire effects. And the reason why he has these fire effects is because... He is the bare knuckles, meaning his hands and his powers is that he can bring out fire through his fist when he fights and when he gets charged up or when he's angry and gets stronger. And each one of these fire effects is for when he's doing a different type of fist movement like this one here, if I'm not mistaken is when he does the uh, 
Brett Paul, where he slides up, goes up in the knee, kind of sliding up forward, going up in an uppercut movement, but without leaving the ground. And he matches it up, this fire, like he was doing, like when you're lighting up a match on a box to turn on a fire, you know, a match from the floor all the way up. And he hits uh, characters from underneath, starting from their feet. This is the one for that one, right? This one here that's a lot smaller here is for the quick tap. When you quickly tap it, he does a 180 degree circle really fast with a quick punch to the stomach that brings out the fire, but it's still effective and takes a lot of energy away. So this is for that one. And then last and thirdly, but lastly, but not least, obviously, obviously, but not least. This is the one when he does the uppercut going up in the air. It's more wider, and you see that up here is lighter, and it gets more orangey down here. And you see him from the back of his back and his head going upwards, doing the fire uppercut. So those are the three different uh, moves and why he has the three different fire effects for people who are going to be like, but why he brings three different fire effects? That's the reason why, because they are all very indicative of the moves that he does with his fists in the game. For those of you who perhaps like figures and don't really play video games. So, those are his accessories. They were a boatload. So now let's keep it on moving right along. And the next thing we're taking a look at is Axel's articulation. All right, guys, now let's get into Axel Stone articulation. And before we get into the articulation, once again, here's the backdrop of the inside insert. And here is like what I was telling you. Let's zoom it out a little bit. As you see right there, you can see is another area within the game with another backdrop. Now, one thing I did want to mention about all his accessories was that if you notice with Axel Stone, the good thing about him having all these accessories is that if they do get to other characters, uh, that I wanted to say during, you know, that segment with the uh, accessories. Um, they don't have to worry as much uh, of, you know, concentrating on what type of, uh, you know, weapons they can give the guys because he came with them. Or they can concentrate more on more thing, other things like, you know, uh, like the details or even making it at a better price point, perhaps. So that's the good thing about having all these accessories so early with, with this first release. Now, as we have here, Axel in front of us, let's start off with his head. It goes left, it goes right. Very nicely done. It has a wonderful, wonderful tilt. It goes all the way back, like so. Looking natural, and goes down very much so, with no problem. And as I told you guys before, I love that these section of the neckline that's connected to the head it's also pliable so when you move it it looks like a real person's neck in real life when it moves it looks a lot really natural and very fluid one thing I really love about that rubber piece being rubber on the neck area with the articulation then for the shoulders looking real close you see it has the butterfly we'll move this all the way around in the shoulder at 180 degrees right then you see that the cut is very nicely hidden on the bicep but again with the same effect of the neck look I like that when you move it it looks like it's the bicep moving underneath the actual sleeve which is really nice and that is this cut on the bicep then the double double on the elbow which goes a little more than 90 but it looks really nice and clean and round then of course the ball peg on the hinge of the wrist was obviously in circular motion up and down 
or you could turn around the peg and have it go up and down. Uh, now, for this area here, like, you, like I told you before, um, you have the nice waist swivel, right? Then you have the motion of tilt. He does a nice motion that way, All right? Oh, his hair, hair dress came off. Sorry about that, as you see there. And then he also moves to the other direction, like so. Nice tiltage, right? Then as far as this area here, if you want to move it forward, without this piece, you hold the, the waist area and you move it forward and it moves forward that much, which is a whole lot. Then you hold that piece also, and then you move it backwards, and you see that he has gapage, but this is what he looks like. Now, if you want to move it together with the torso and stomach area piece, then all you would do is bring it down together, like so, and he goes down a whole bunch. Then you would do it again the other direction. Together with the, and he goes that hyper extends back all the way like so, and then you see the gap there. And you see the gap there. Now, again, like I told you, my problem is with this QC issue here is all the paint is rubbing off, and it's just getting worse and worse every time I touch them. And back here, I hope they're able to exchange that for me because that really, really feels like a drag, and it bothers me because. You know, I like the figure. Even though it looks like it's weathered and tithered from fighting, it's not supposed to be that way. And knowing that bothers me. So, the Van Dam split in a moment here. As we have. Here you go. Van Dam split. Ba -ba -ba. Really well uh, and done. And then we have the swivel. Oh boy, the swivel on the upper top part of the uh, thigh, right? And then the double double on the. And it's weird because the inside is not even. Oh, no, it, it is. It is. It is tricky. It's a double double knee. Goes up that much. And then he has obviously a swivel on the ankle by the sneaker the high tops toe pivot that goes up like so then this is where I told you they use some new engineering instead of doing it from here on the top of the foot it did it right on the part of the tongue where it goes back this much goes forward that much and it has obviously the toe rocker it kind of looks ugly to be honest with you but I it's effective, and I give them, I give Storm Collectible credit for trying a different approach and a different cut to see how it works out. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is how you figure out, I guess, better solutions for future figures, and you know, with the engineering. You know, I can't imagine how hard it must really be to get it all perfect and done right. Because as you know, the one thing that these figures always have is they don't have no peg holes whatsoever. And none of the joints, which is a very, very nice touch. So, here we have them here, and that's what we could do now is let's give them, uh, you know, a weapon, right, of choice. I don't know. Let's see. Maybe the cleaver, right? The cleaver, and and we'll stand them up here. With the meat cleaver. With that kind of stance, like I'm gonna cut you up, so to speak, so to stance, like so. And as you can see, there looks really good with it. Let's bring down these some of these accessories out of the way, boop, boop, boop. and then. You know, if you want to see him with like, I don't know, the, uh, with some of his, um, fire effects, what I could do is, maybe I could have 
this come off. Let's put his, uh, where is it? Where did he go? It's somewhere right here. Alright, his fist. I'm gonna put his fist like so. Over here. Real quick. Put his fist. Boom. Then we, like that, right? We have the fist, right? And then, what we could do is, like, I'll use the little fire effect where it's supposed to be really quick. Or he does the quick roundhouse punch to the stomach. And it looks like he's going from right there to right there. Which is kind of cool. Oh, with the oh, the ball joint popped out. Fudge. Oh boy. Let's pop this back here. Hold on really quick. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. Give me a second. Uh, ouch. There we go. Sorry. Pulled it back a little too much. Wasn't my intent. Honestly, it really wasn't. And like he's going with a real quick you know uh with a real fast uh you know uh punch to the stomach like let's see let's put somebody in here with him like he's about to punch batman in the stomach right there as an example let's see can we zoom this back out uh, there we go like he's about to punch batman real quick Ooh, right in the stomach Batman's about to uh, get it. He's about to get it really hard, real fast. Boom. Oh, my God. He doesn't want to stand. Like, oh, he's about to take it right in the stomach really badly by Axel Stone. He's going to bring the heat right from the streets. So there you go. You see uh, how it kind of will work, um, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, it looks great, especially if you have a nice display area. Uh, some people be having some beautiful, beautiful display areas for their figs and with a lot of room, so it's going to look fantastic. And then we'll try something else. We'll put the other fire effect, for example, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Uh, he's going off camera, but I'm going to take this off right here, and I'm going to put. Uh, the open hand like this, like so, right? Just to see if I can get the effect where he's going up, put the head up, he's kind of got the feet that way, he's going up, and this is what he looks like, you kind of turn him that way, hands will go down like, like this, this is what he's supposed to look like when he's doing the oh boy, I don't know if I can keep him up like that. Oh, wow, scary. It's not easy to do. Let's see if we can get him. Okay, and that's what he would look like, obviously, if he's doing the uppercut. This would be the you know, his, his head would probably be like a little bit more up, like so. If you had a flight stand, you could definitely make it look really nice. Uh, you know, I'm just kind of winging it here with uh, with his, you know, toe hinges. Which are actually helping out to do this right now. But there you go. You look like that. I'll give you another example. And stuff like that. So, you know, let's bring in some other, uh, you know, let's bring some other... Uh, figs in here real quick to you know compare them to or so we can do some side-by-side -side comparisons so we can kind of get an idea of this in sense of scale right like that's the, that's the best way I can put it sense of scale um let me see so let's do something like this you know like he's gonna do a fighting stance or so you know like he's gonna do a fighting stance somebody let's see turn him do this like this he's gonna do a fighting stance like it's like a fighting stance uh, there um, and let's put maybe again the 
few uh, jazz wear uh, eight inch or seven inch line of Halo figures. This is one of the figures I have. At the moment, um, and let's bring in that Batman from McFarlane Toys from the Arkham Knight game. Put him side by side just so that you guys can get an idea of what he looks like. Boop, boop, boop. Oh boy. It's McFarlane Toys Batman for some reason. Because I guess the way his, his cape is, for some reason, he really has a hard time standing. He doesn't want to stand up. Um, and it's not that his limbs are loose or anything. He just. He's really feisty. He likes to fight a lot. Uh, so let me see if I can stand on there the best I can. Open his legs a little bit. Oh boy, give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. This is a run on situation. Um, maybe this will work. Let's see. Yeah, he doesn't look too great at his feet. But let's zoom it out. Let's zoom it out. And there he is, that's what he looks like there, side by side. So let's move this over here, and let's bring in maybe, uh, let's see, uh, let's bring in someone like, I don't know, let's see, uh, Baraka from McFarlane Toys, a new Baraka. Mortal Kombat right there next to him. As you can see, again, for some odd reason, these guys don't want to stand and and it's not that the ang the ang it's not that the ankles are loose. You just gotta get them in the right right spot. So they co they'll cooperate. So they can cooperate. Okay, let me see. Got that there. Okay. Let's put him next to a Cobra Trooper. From G.I. Joe Classified from Hasbro. Just so you guys can get an idea of scale. That looks kind of good, right? And let's do one more. One more, one more, one more. Let's bring in... Uh, let's see. Let's bring in... Uh, Mumra from the Super 7's re-release re of of Thundercats as you see here Mumra has his uh, very elegant looking cloth cape looking pretty nice uh, really nice and then let's bring in Malcolm from Mr. Jeff Goldblum from, from Jurassic Park in all of his glory you know, he, he gotta, if he can take out T Rex, take on T Rexes, he could definitely take on Axel Stone. I mean, no, there's no question about it. You know, that's all there is to it, right? So, there you go. Just to give you a nice, you know, idea of what they look like. So, I guess from here, let's move on and let's see. Basically, give you my final thoughts of this figure and end the review, right? So, let's get out of here. I'll, I'll be right back. Well, guys, I have to say, I really think this figure is absolutely stunning. It's absolutely worth every penny you pay for it. It's very premium. It feels premium. It looks premium. It has accessories that justify it being premium. The figure itself looks premium. Um, it's just a fun figure and a, actually a really nice nod and a pretty, you know, to the old retro, you know, uh, IPs of, of back in the day, obviously based off the new games, but with the job that I see here that, uh, you know, has been created and done for this particular figure, right? Uh, for Axel, and it just makes me very hopeful and very excited to see interpretations of other future characters from the same video game series in other uh, parts, like part one and part two, and so forth and so forth. Um, 
in their younger form and things like that, you know, in different costumes. Um, it, it's going to be really nice to see if, if, if Storm Collectible can actually uh, bring them to the table. Um, with this first entry, I think they knocked it out of the park. I think any Streets of Rage fan is going to be highly, highly, highly excited and very uh, happy to add this on to their collection. Um, it comes at a cost, absolutely. Uh, but the nice thing is that Storm Collectible kind of branches out their uh, figures uh, by the year. They don't bring out every single game uh, character from every single license out like that, you know, uh, so quickly back to back with each character. They take their time, they kind of bring out one character at a time for each licenses. Um, so it gives you time to like cherry pick or uh, save for the ones that you want. Um, Unless you obviously want to collect every single figure in line that they collect, that's different. Uh, and even then, they, they kind of spread out pretty well. So, um, I think they did an excellent job, and I highly recommend it. Um, <clears throat> if you can find it for the price it was uh, available for, I, I say go for it. Um, don't pay too much in the aftermarket for them. But remember, they usually just print their figures once and don't really reprint them again. Um, so I don't know if you'll see a reprint or a rerun again of the figure. So uh, that's the only thing I can say about that. Uh, so give a thumbs up if you liked the review. Give a thumbs down if you didn't like the review, right? And as always, let me know uh, down in the comments below. What did you think about the figure? If you're planning on picking him up, if you already have them yourself, or you know if you um, you know if you I don't know if, this, if you're gonna pick them up if you're planning to pick them up or if you uh, have no plans on picking them up um, because you don't like them or whatever the case may be uh, regardless of what it is you guys uh, just let me know in the comments below share them with me because I like to get your thoughts on it and share this video with someone you think might like it. As always, you can find me on social media under C underscore respect on Twitter, right? Or rather, on um, Instagram. And on Twitter, you can find me under Hebop Powerful Gamer, right? On, obviously, uh, Twitter. And Instagram, C underscore respect. Sorry about that. And, and, and you guys can also want to help me in any way shape or form and have the means to and want to help me keep you know uh, building my channel and keep adding good content of all types of stuff that interests you uh, you know you can uh, do it you know and all it's all down in the description below if you you know want to from the kindness of your heart remember it's not that you have to and even if you want to make a donation or want me to do something uh, by donating it I'll be, it'll be my pleasure, it'll be my honor, just DM me and we'll work out the particulars. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> so we'll go from there. So, as always guys, it's been an absolute pleasure to review this for you. Um, I appreciate your support and all the love, especially the new subscribers. And remember, if you're new to my channel, like I said, um, welcome. And if you subscribe, thank you, because I know you don't have to, but if you did, I consider you now part of my family. And be careful, guys, out there, doing what you love, hunting your figures, you know, having a nice time to kind of ease your mind from all this bad negativity going on in the world right now. But do it safely, do it thoughtfully, and do it with care, taking consideration to others. So this is your host, Ebot, signing off with the latest episode of Toys in My Closet, this is the Storm Collectible, 7 inch scale, Streets of Rage 4, Axel Stone, uh, from, you know, a uh, beautiful figure, you know, I'll see you guys in the next one, love you very much, bye bye.